The uses and capabilities of artificial intelligence have progressed so rapidly in recent years over a range of fields and whilst it isn't yet playing as large a role in creative crafts, it is beginning to be explored in those areas and people are starting to think about what sort of future role it could play. If you've seen any of the publicly available open source AIs, what they can do already is pretty incredible. So as a chef, I wanted to see what they might be capable of in relation to the food world and whether I could use an AI to design a dish suitable for a tasting menu. And in this video, I'm gonna get an AI to suggest the flavor combinations for a dish, the ingredients and how they'll be prepared, and then to generate images of how to present it. I'll follow the suggestions from the AI as closely as I can, and I'm gonna show you that process and the results. For this little experiment though, I wanted to ask AI to design a small dish, something fairly simple, but in a style that was suitable for a tasting menu. I wanted to keep it simple and ideally something that I could make relatively quickly too. I knew I was never gonna try and put this dish onto my menu. The bar for that is much higher. There's a much more detailed creative process and a lot more refinement that would go into that. But I did want this to hopefully at least look like something that could fit with the style of my food. So to get started with designing this dish, I asked the AI to suggest some unusual but delicious flavor combinations. And it suggested a number of them, most of them quite pedestrian I would say, but all of them do make sense as flavour combinations. Some of them I just skip past because I don't cook with meat or fish, and I settled on the suggestion of strawberry and black pepper. Obviously I wouldn't normally work with an ingredient like strawberries in the winter, and the AI isn't taking into account things like seasonality that would be important to me, but I'm sure in the future it would be able to learn those preferences and adapt its responses to them. So then I prompted it to suggest me one more flavour to combine with the strawberry and black pepper and it suggested honey, which sits well with me because if you've watched many of my videos you'll know I keep my own bees and I use some of their surplus honey on my tasting menu. I actually also have an elderflower infused honey that I made in the summer that it immediately strikes me would work nicely with the flavours of strawberry and black pepper too. So that gave me my three key flavours suggested by the AI of strawberry, black pepper and honey. And then I wanted it to suggest how those would be prepared and nudge it in the direction of making something that would be small and suitable for a tasting menu. And so it came back with, yes, the strawberry, honey and black pepper dish that I described earlier could potentially be served as a single bite on a tasting menu. And here's one way you could serve it. Skewer a single strawberry on a toothpick, drizzle the strawberry with honey and sprinkle with black pepper, and serve the skewered strawberry on a plate along with a small spoonful of whipped cream or creme fraiche. So that's appealingly simple and easy to imagine as a nice complementary flavour combination. It's not very inventive and unless you were serving the very best wild strawberries in season, it's an idea that would probably require quite a lot more development if it was going to be on a tasting menu in, in terms of its flavour intensity and balance. But for a non-specialised AI, very quickly giving you these suggestions, I don't think that's bad at all. So next I wanted to get some AI generated presentation suggestions. So I jumped over to Dali, the AI image generator. If you've not used it before, it's incredibly simple and pretty fascinating. You just enter text and it comes up with original images based on that. Some of the results you get are pretty good and quite interesting. And then sometimes you get quite uncanny, somewhat nightmarish images too. So I tried entering descriptions of the dish a few different ways to get some presentation suggestions. A couple of things that I found out quite quickly was that it's best not to list all of the ingredients because it wants to give them all fairly equal prominence and so things like black pepper would feature much too prominently in the image in a way that you would never use it in real life. 
So it was much better to just mention the key ingredients that you would see on the plate and that immediately started to give you more realistic results. Then I also found it useful to push it towards some stylistic choices. So using terms like small modern tasting menu dish and then also adding in prompts like dark aesthetic. So then it was time to put together the dish and these are the strawberries that I managed to get hold of, which pains me to use them, but I did want to stick with what the AI had suggested for better or worse. Here you can see I actually vacuum compressed the strawberries with a little honey and verjus, which is an extra step the AI didn't suggest, but working with strawberries out of season, I felt like I needed to do a little extra something with them. And I used an oat cream creme fraiche that I've sweetened with a little honey. Then I needed to dress the strawberries with the honey from my bees and a little sprinkle of black pepper. If this is something I've been working on myself, I might have looked for some other ways to integrate the black pepper, perhaps as a distillation or a different type of extract, but I'm going with just simply sprinkling it here like the AI suggested. And now I've tried to plate it up in a way that's inspired by the images that the DALI AI generated. And here's what I ended up with, which is definitely not something that I would have made myself, but I think it's pretty interesting that all of the ideas and instructions and presentations for this all came from an AI. And then we have this finished physical thing. It tastes pretty nice with my own honey. One weird thing is that while the flavours are fine, it's definitely a very summery combination and it's a little bit jarring to have that in what's the middle of winter at the moment. But I think you could probably get around that by being more specific in the questions or in the future using a more specialist AI. The point here was to mainly follow the AI and for this to be quick and not my usual process of working on dishes over a long period of time. So much of the creative process for me normally would be about getting out in nature and being inspired by what's growing here in the raised beds, by experiences and conversations and other influences. The other thing to note here is that the AI doesn't really have much context for me. It doesn't know my skill level, what equipment I have, or my stylistic preferences. So what it's suggesting a lot of the time is quite average, quite general. You know, there's techniques that I could have used that it's not suggesting, presumably because it's trying to suggest something that would be suitable for the greatest number of people. So the general point there, I guess, is that the open source AI isn't very specialized and doesn't have a lot of prior knowledge going into it, but that isn't really a criticism. Those things will definitely come and will be a part of more specialized AIs. And that relates to something that I am hoping to work on over the course of this year. In general, for something publicly available, I still think this is pretty amazing. And how rapidly the technology has got to this point is fairly staggering, I think. Just as a side note, the reason that I got interested in this in the first place was because for another project, I was looking at some of the open source AI and I happened to ask it what it thought the future of fine dining might be. And I got this really rapid, eloquent answer that aligned really with what I would guess myself, that there would be an increased focus on sustainability and the use of locally sourced organic ingredients, the incorporation of new technologies and techniques with an emphasis on experimental dining and unique immersive dining experiences, and the continued growth of plant-based movements and an increased demand for creative, high-end plant-based dishes on fine dining menus. And that takes me to my conclusions from this little experiment and what it's made me think about creativity and how we might genuinely use AI as a creative tool in the future. For me, the creative process is so tied into my experiences and feelings and that sense of being out in nature and inspired by what's going on around me that it's hard to imagine farming any of that out to another person, let alone an AI. I have dishes on the menu that are built around specific experiences, the, the feeling of being in a pine forest or the memory of flavors from when I was cooking in Mexico. And then it's the sharing of the stories and ideas around these dishes that makes up part of the unique experience of coming here for the tasting menu, I think. But what I do think we'll find is that with AI playing a greater role in all sorts of areas of life, it's gonna find its way into creative processes too. 
On the most basic level, probably as a way to rapidly research ideas and topics, and then also to give form and visualization to ideas. So if I wanted to share an image I had in my mind with someone, I could use AI software to generate something very close to that image more quickly than I could say draw it out and maybe more accurately than I could describe. So I hope you found that interesting. It was a fun little experiment for me and I'm looking forward to chipping away at that other AI project over the course of the year. Next up, I'll probably do another technique or recipe video, but I've got lots of cool stuff planned for this year. So make sure you subscribe to keep up with that. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.